it's time for another build series. The base of which is this BMP2 kit made by Dragon. Now this kit is over 30 years old, and being that old, it has some obvious shortcomings. Parts lacking detail and individual components molded as one piece are pretty common for this era of kit. But the biggest problem is that the vehicle I'm referencing has its rear hatches open and its gun barrel pointed straight up. And as you'll see, there's no detail on the rear doors and there's no way to move the gun barrel. But I didn't let that stop me. I started putting together the running gear. As you do, when you follow the directions on most tanks. A few things needed to be drilled through for the extra details, but that wasn't a problem. I'm going to be building this tank with some pretty significant damage. But to start that damage, I need to have the running gear in place so I know how to manipulate them. So after some texture, I put on the wheels. The main sprockets, for some reason, do not fit around some of the shocks for the wheels, so they had to be sanded down. But here was the fun part. I wanted to make some of the rubber burnt off the wheels. So I hooked them up to a drill and got to sanding. This made quick work of the process, and I'd highly recommend it. Just don't expect to be spinning those wheels anytime soon. Now that they're all burnt off, I put the track on the other side, and then it was time to start manipulating the suspension. Here again, on some other kits, this comes as its own individual piece, but here we had to cut and do some modifications. This also meant that I had to have some way of molding the tracks in place without the diorama base. So I just used a little piece of foam that was a cut off from another project. And I used that to make sure that I didn't have any floating wheels when it was time to place this tank in its final spot. This is one instance where I absolutely wish I had aftermarket uh, track links for this. The plastic that comes with the kit is very brittle when it gets glued like this. So prepare for some fiddly work if you're not getting aftermarket tracks. Now we're gonna start some of the modifications that I did with the 3D printer and scratch building. The rear hatch openings for this tank are not the correct size. So I had to modify them and to keep everything even, I just whipped up this little jig that I could put on the Sharpie so everything remained the same size. After some grinding, I had everything the proper size. Now the clear plastic will fit inside and act as a seal. Since the doors are going to be open, I needed to have some of the interior details that you would see when the doors were open. The most prominent are these interior uh, axle hubs that fit just inside the rear hatch. Also, there's a pretty prominent uh, wheel that I believe locks the doors, and there's some seats that run along the center of the vehicle. I modeled and 3D printed all of these parts, but the rear doors were by far the most complex thing I designed. Instead of just making an interior, there was so much lacking detail on the original parts that I just designed and printed my own complete set of doors. I was really happy with how these came out. They're not perfect, but they fit and they definitely fit better in the open position. I did use some of the parts from the doors that came with the kit just so they'd integrate better into the rear of the vehicle. So if you haven't guessed, I'm building a destroyed BMP-2. 
there's a pretty significant conflict happening right now uh, that has provided lots of reference material for destroyed uh, BMP2s and other vehicles. And I just thought this would be an interesting subject to give that treatment to. Working with an older kit, there's just some bad molding as well. All these ports for the periscopes were just not there. They didn't come with the kit and the surrounds were all misshapen and mismolded. So I had to fix that and also clean up some lines around the exhaust that never existed on the actual vehicle. And once we got the top of the hull put in place, we could start working on the turret. The back half and the turret of this vehicle are going to be shown as being consumed by a fire. So that changes a lot of how I want to build this turret. Obviously, I want the gun barrel facing up, but those grenade canisters also were all depleted when the fire consumed the vehicle. The other problem is that the fabric that goes there is not there after a fire. So I had to remold, rebuild my own, and then I put the barrel pointed in the upright position as it is supposed to be. I did make a new muzzle brake because the one in the kit was lacking a lot of detail. And the machine gun was completely different on the uh, reference pictures. So I also modified that. You also have to modify some of the linkage that goes to the barrel as well. And I used some styrene to fix some of the positioning of the light. Here are the grenade canisters. Took the opportunity to add a little bit more detail and put those on and I didn't break any of them. After that, I decided to make new grab handles out of some metal. And then I tried my hand at making some damage on the fenders. This was actually a lot of fun. And while I dremel through this fender, I'd like to talk to you about another fellow YouTuber. His channel is Diorama Devil, and we figured we would both let our viewers know about the other's channel, since you can never have too much model building content. He has tons of great tips and tricks, and some that I'll even be using later in this series. So if you haven't already, be sure to check out his channel. And since that was the last thing to do on the build, we put them on the tank and it was time for the glamour shots. Thanks for watching. See ya.